not everything that is predicted by the theory is just confirmed by the observation. There are some tensions. I think we have to admit that the, we have not a final theory yet. Okay, so I'm going to turn to you, Matt. Uh, is there room for skepticism here, given this context? Like, is there room to be skeptical at this mainstream explanation of the cosmic microwave background, as you see it? There's no room for skepticism in science, no. <laughs> there, there, there should always be room for skepticism in science. I, I think it's, it's absolutely essential. It's a, we're in a funny situation in science because science got really hard, okay? We built this edifice of science on so many layers and once upon a time, you could be a renaissance scientist and basically understand everything, but no longer everything is so specialized now that we sort of have to work at the top of the edifice and, you know, be skeptical about the layers below, but we, we can't rebuild it every time. So th th there are some articles of faith that we have to work with in order to, to even proceed. Um, so so, so that's, a, that's a problem. But in, in the case of the CMB, I, I think the... There are so many, I guess, consistencies in this picture that it's, that it's the Big Bang, okay? So, so it's true that we don't know that the redshift is 1100. That comes from the fact that when you tie it all together, you can build these models of when this early hot gas in the, in the universe let go of its radiation, which, which traveled to us today, and you know that could have happened, you know, right after the Big Bang, a billion years after the Big Bang, but when you weave it all together and you, you factor in the expansion rate and, and, and everything, then, then that redshift is what works out. So it, so it is true that you know, we're not just looking at it and seeing, oh, it comes from this distance and this time. It does require weaving together the various models in what we call our concordance cosmology, which actually feels a little bit uncomfortable because you're not just seeing the moons of Jupiter, but you're, you're really relying on these many pieces. But also cosmologists are very careful. And, and, and my sense is that the, the cosmology does hang together very well. It's not a house of cards. Okay, Marika, what is your point of view on the, this problem? So, so I would have said, you know, if we go back 30, 40 years ago, there was a lot more scope to have alternative ideas about what might be happening. So 20 years ago, people really thought there was a possibility that the universe has large extra dimensions, you know, extra dimensions which are big enough to, for all your socks to be lost there. Um, you know, they had ideas that maybe the universe was formed, so the very beginning of the universe came from smashing two things together. Now, 30, 20, 30 years ago, there wasn't that much data which actually, you know, you could test your theory against. Now there's a lot more data. So if you, if you go out of this talk and you, you look up pictures of the cosmic microwave background and you look at the pictures from 30 years ago and look at those from 20 years ago and 10 years ago, you see that they're getting, you know, it's like you've gone into focus. They're getting more and more detailed. There's more and more information there. And so it's actually quite hard to come up with a really interesting, radical, fun idea about what could have been happening in the early universe, which actually fits all the, the data. And that's the basic, you know, that for me as a principle, is, as a scientist, is that if I come up with a model, I've got to explain all the things that are out there. So some, some version of what we've got seems to be correct. But that still leaves lots of interesting questions, and those that include the ones that you, you mentioned at the beginning. We, we know we've got to tweak things. We don't understand why the universe is accelerating, for example. And as we understand that better, that could give new light into the microwave background itself. It could have formed in a slightly different way than we thought, for example. So what do you think of this, Martin? Why aren't there any good alternatives? It seems that this is clearly the only alternative that works. Why is that? Uh, indeed, there are alternatives, but they are not well known. Uh, we have to admit that uh, most cosmologists, thousands of people, uh, work in the standard theory and they make uh, a lot of uh, propaganda, a lot of uh, publications, a lot of conference, and the few, the very few people working with alternative ideas are almost unknown. But they produce some uh, basic ideas, some seeds of ideas. They, they need to be developed more, but they, they need manpower, they need uh, just uh, time to, to develop the theory, but uh, the, the main points are, are there. It's true, I totally agree, that it, 
at present, there is not a, a competing theory as good as the, the Big Bang. The Big Bang is much more developed. You have explained it correctly in the last 30, 40 years with the advances in the theory, with the advances in the observations. Well, we have got a, a much higher degree of confidence in the standard theory because there is a lot of people trying to put ad hoc corrections of the model just to, to fit the data. This is the thing. Uh, there are also uh, um, some the disagreements uh, between data and the, and the, and the theory. Uh, the more precise are the data, uh, the more tensions that arise. And, and nowadays, there are uh, also publications, many reviews, telling that there are p plenty of things that they, they call uh, spots or the uh, alignment between the dipole and octopole, the technical things that I'm not going to explain here. But uh, not everything that is predicted by the theory is just confirmed by the observation. Th there are some tensions, and, and the more data we have, the more tensions that arise. So the, well, I think we have to admit that the, we have not a final theory yet. Possibly we are in the right way. We have to uh, still be working on that, correcting the small details, but uh, the, not everything is perfect. Not, every, not everything is perfect as, so far. Okay, so if this was a skeptics conference and we had to latch on to one thing about the cosmic microwave background, what is the, what is the one thing that is the most problematic, you think, with the current interpretation of the CMB? Like if you had to narrow it down to one thing. In my opinion, the black, black body uh, radiation. It's very difficult. It's a basic aspect of the radiation, but it's, it's very difficult to get a perfect black body, as, as we see you know, at the level of, of this... Uh, with very small uh, deviation from the black body. Uh, there are mechanisms to thermalize the radiation, to produce a black body radiation, but uh, we don't know, at present, we don't know any other mechanism apart from the standard theory to, to produce such a perfect black body. This does not mean that does not exist. Maybe there are some particles that are perfect th uh, thermalization of the radiation. Uh, there is an extra problem with the black body that uh, you need to assume that they come from a, a very narrow layer of distances. Because if you integrate, integrate many, uh, many distances along the line of sight with different redshifts, different black bodies with different redshifts is not a black body. So it, here you have a problem. Unless you, you say that the, there is no, uh, the redshift is not affecting the photons of the CMB, which is something very exotic. Or, as I say, unless you say that all the radiation comes from a very narrow layer. So this is a serious problem for any attempt to create alternative theories, but it's not impossible. And there are, uh, as I say, I remit to the, to the literature, there are, there are attempts uh, to do that, yes. Do you agree, Matt, that this is a potential problem, what Martin is outlining? I might need to talk to you later about this, um, because so my impression was that, so you, the idea is that at very early times, you've created all your first electrons and protons and these, all these subatomic particles, no atoms yet. And then there's this period as the universe expands that things cool down and the, the very first atoms were created and it, it was over a very short period of time in the creation of those atoms that the universe became transparent. And that short period of time translates to a short distance, I guess, in, in which the, the photons that were bouncing around in the initial plasma, which perhaps correct me, but these should have been a perfect black body. I mean, this is like the interior of the sun. Uh, they, they were suddenly released with that temperature. So, so where does the, the so you, if, if these are all created over a very short period of time and the universe is pretty homogeneous, where does the, where does the imperfection in the black body come from? I guess I would need to ask you that. Uh, they are not my theories. I am not a theoretician, but according to the heterodox cosmologists that try to propose some alternative ideas, this radiation comes from the thermalization of the stellar radiation. There is a stellar, a background stellar radiation, either in a population three of all the stars in the, in the far past or in the present radiation. You, you, you take all this radiation and there are some particles let's say, in the intergalactic medium, that thermalize this radiation. So, so the, an alternative theory can give you the thermal 
Yes, exactly. The, the, the question is which are these particles that thermalize? Because we know we know there is a, there are many particles in the intergalactic medium, dust mainly, gas and dust, but uh, the the emission of the dust is not a perfect black body. We know it. So we need to suppose that there are some unknown particles with some special properties which are able to uh, absorb all the radiation coming from uh, the stellar radiation and re-emit again. And uh, indeed, the, for the uh, equilibrium of energy, the numbers go pretty well, because if you calculate the amount of energy released by the radiation from the stellar radiation and you thermalize it, precisely you get a number between 1 and 6 Kelvin. This, this was well known before the 60s. In the, there are many papers in the beginning of 20th century. Eddington has uh, published a paper, but also uh, Finlay, many papers during the first uh, half of the, sec uh, the 20th century. And they have predicted that there should be some background radiation due to the uh, thermalization of the of, of stellar radiation. What they have not predicted is that they have a black body. This is the, the, the key point. No? But the, the temperature of the radiation is not uh, impossible to imagine the, the origin. Okay, uh, Marika, do you see this as a big problem, or is this mostly a, a detailed question that can I, be solved? Yeah, I think this is about more about detailed things which are solved. And I think if we look at the current understanding of the mechanism of formation, this is this is quite well understood. So, if I were going to pick out, you know, what I think is a, a big question about the microwave background, it's the question we we had, a, you know, before about the fact that the universe is accelerating, and the ideas of why the universe is accelerating. So. Um, Einstein infamously had this, this term, he, he put in his, you know, his theory, the cosmological constant factor. It was a fudge factor because at the time he was trying to cook up a theory which would give a steady state universe, right? He thought that the universe should not be changing in time. So that's why, you know, the fudge factor was called the cosmological constant to make things constant. Now, for a long time he thought that was a mistake because, you know, it was so, you know, shortly realized that the, the universe was, you know, was expanding. Now, when we realized that the universe was accelerating, this, this term came back in again. But if you look at what the CMB wants to say the size of this is, and if you look at other ways of measuring that, so supernovae exploding, they seem to give slightly different answers. So there is actually a sort of, you know, an ongoing debate about, you know, is, what, is the, you know what is the cause of the acceleration and what is the size of this cosmological constant which drives the acceleration? And this might be a signal that we're actually not quite understanding there's something we're missing about the form formation of the cosmic microwave background. Now, I should say it might also mean that we're missing something about supernovae, right? Maybe we don't understand something that's going on with supernovae, but there's definitely something that we need to understand there. So that is, a, it is an interesting puzzle. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.